Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. We'll get started in just a few moments. I'll give everyone some time to uh, get in and get settled. Um, if you have a pen and paper handy, that will be good if you want to take down some notes. But we also will be recording this session, so you can watch it back after. So don't worry about um, getting every everything down. Um, thank you so much to those who are joining us. Uh, it's nice to see some familiar names uh, here in the participant list. Um, for those of you that I haven't had the chance to meet yet, I am Lindsay. I am head of community and events for Outsight. Outsight is a global network of co-living and co-working spaces around the world. We have about 50 different locations in the U.S., Latin America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. We also offer community perks and events uh, just like this one for digital nomads, remote workers, creatives, entrepreneurs, or anyone who's interested in um, the remote work lifestyle. Before we get started, I would love uh, if everyone could go ahead and introduce themselves in the chat. Just let us know uh, where you're calling in from. I'd love to see uh, who we have here with us today. Make sure you have your chat set to everyone, not just host and panelists, so that others can see your uh, responses as well. Um, and we will get started in just a few moments. Um, some housekeeping uh, notes. Uh, the Q&A box will be open as well as the chat box during the presentation. So if you think of any questions, the Q&A box is the first place that we'll look at the end of the session um, when it is Q&A time. And in the Q&A box, others can also uh, upvote questions so we can make sure that we get to the, the most pressing questions first. I also um, will be uh, checking the chat, but the Q&A box is, is probably the best place to get your question answered. Answered. I'm seeing some people introduce themselves in the chat. Haley from NYC, welcome. David from Vancouver, um, Andrew from Cape Cod, Brittany calling in from Bogota and Wisconsin. So nice to have uh, so many people here with us today from all over. And I do already see one question in the Q&A box. There will, uh, this session is being recorded and it will be sent out after um, after probably tomorrow or early next week. So don't worry about trying to take down all of your notes. Uh, you can watch it back after, that won't be a problem. Again, thank you uh, to those who are just joining us now. We have uh, people calling in from all over. It's so nice uh, to have everyone here. And um, again, I am Lindsay, I'm head of community and events for Outsight. Outsight is a global network of co-living and co-working spaces we have. Uh, about 50 locations all around the world. And we also offer community for digital nomads, remote workers, creatives, entrepreneurs, anyone who's interested in the lifestyle. We're here today, we're gonna to talk about um, how to um, maximize your credit card points and, and miles. I know um, probably many of you like me have a lot of credit card points and travel pretty frequently, but I really don't know how to, to best use these points that um, I'm accruing. So that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. Um, and thank you to everyone who is introducing themselves in the chat. Again, um, I will have the Q&A box and the chat open uh, for the duration of the event. The Q&A box is the first place that I will look for questions at the end after Stacey finishes her presentation uh, and it's time for Q&A and others can also upvote in, in the Q&A. But I will check the chat too, so wherever you feel like putting in your question, go ahead and, and we'll get those answered at the end. So um, with that, I think we should go ahead and get started. I know that Stacey has a ton of really good information, so I wanna get right into it. Stacey, how are, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being here with us. Where are you calling in from today? Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm calling in from New York City, where we're currently experiencing a major heat wave, which I think also the rest of the U.S. is having. So I hope you guys are all staying cool if you are experiencing that. But yeah, New York City. Excellent. All right. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and get right into it then. Perfect. Um, so hi, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, I'm Stacey. I'm a creator and CEO of Points to Point Travel, um, which is a website, blog, social media accounts, and consulting service that helps you guys use your credit card points to travel smarter and travel better. So I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about myself um, and sort of who I am and, and how I came um, to be here today. Um, so I grew up in a bilingual family and then I learned two other languages growing up. So learning other languages, learning about other cultures and travel were always, always encouraged when I was growing up, um, which I was very lucky to do so. So I got to travel a lot. 
um, throughout the year. So I've been to 22 countries, four continents, and 24 states. Um, and I got into points and miles a little bit later in the game. So it's been about two years since I first got my first travel credit card. Um, and since then, I've earned over 900,000 uh, points and saved over $15,000 in um, travel expenses, such as flights, hotels, rental cards, and airport meals. Um, and so a little quick timeline and sort of how I got to be here today, right? So two years ago, I got my first travel credit card. It was April, 2022. I was graduating college. I was going on a big month long trip to Europe um, right after graduation. And so I signed up for my first travel credit card, which was the Capital One Venture X. Um, and through that, I was able to save over a thousand dollars on that trip to Europe. And I think since then I've been hooked. Um, and so after graduating, after traveling to Europe, I uh, moved to New York City started working in investment banking as my first full-time job. Um, and then a year into that, I actually left investment banking to go on my first solo trip, which was all booked using credit card points. When um, this was around this time last year, actually. And so six months later, um, after traveling a lot throughout the um, year, I traveled to South America for the first time. I visited Machu Picchu. Um, I went to Brazil. Um, I went a big three week trip to Thailand um, over the holidays. And that was the first time I actually used my points to buy a business class flight um, and not just any business class flight. If you guys know, um, a and is the room, which is one of the best business class uh, seats in the world. Um, that was my first business class flight ever. And I was able to book it for only 37,000 Amex points and $280 in tax and fees, which is to this day, um, the best redemption I've ever used my points for. It was over 13 cents per point. Um, so I was so excited. Um, and then in February of this year, so a couple months ago, I officially started um, Points to Point Travel to help others travel smarter and better because I think I anyone can do it. Um, I think it just takes, you know, having others to learn from um, and some essential tips and tricks and you'll be on your way. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is answer the question that I get asked most often, which is how am I able to earn so many points? So when I post videos on social media, on Instagram and TikTok, when I talk with um, clients, the first question is, how do I have so many points? And the answer is credit card welcome offers. So chances are, if you have a tra travel credit card, a travel rewards credit card that earns points, um, it has some sort of sign up bonus or welcome offer um, that's, you know, X amount of points for spending X amount of money in X amount of months. Um, and from my five travel credit cards that I've signed up for, four of those have had welcome offers. Um, I've earned almost 400,000 points just from welcome offers alone. Um, and on average, I redeem my points at around four cents per point. Um, so if you do the math, that means I've saved about $15,000 on travel just in the welcome offers alone. Um, and while some people may look at this number of money I spent on annual fees, which is over $1,400 a year, um, which is, I say, I would say on the sort of like avid credit card enthusiast side. Um, but if you compare that to the amount of money that I've saved just in welcome offers alone, um, it's almost 15 times um, the value. So it definitely is, uh, you know, a personal preference. Um, I think credit cards specifically should work for your lifestyle. So whether that's having just one that you put everything on and use to travel, whether that's having a bunch of different ones to match your spending categories, um, I think credit cards should add to your life and work for you rather than the other way around. Um, so these are some of the more um, classic and most popular travel rewards credit cards that are out there on the market. So you've probably heard of some of these, right? The Chase Alpha Preferred, the Capital One Venture X, the Capital One Venture, the Amex Gold, the Amex Platinum. Um, and their annual fees range anywhere from $95 to $695, and they all come with some sort of welcome offer. Now, these welcome offers, as you can see, range from anywhere from $600 to $800 in terms of how much travel you can kind of get for that amount of um, points. But but if you use the tips and tricks that you'll learn in this video um, or in the seminar, um, you can definitely redeem those points for, for minute, way, way, way more money. So um, another thing that credit cards will sometimes often do is also do like limited time elevated offers. Um, so these are the two that are currently going on right now. I think both might be ending pretty soon, um, but they're usually through referral links. So credit card um, users so like an Amex Gold user can refer someone else to the Amex Gold. And that's usually where you'll see these current elevated offers. Um, so I would say if you're ever on the fence about getting a card or you've been thinking about it for a while, um, I would say I would pick a time where there is an elevated offer, like the one for the Amex Gold right here or the one for the Chase Hacker preferred right here, because um, that is a really, really great time to sign up for the card because you'll be getting more points for your buck um, than you would otherwise. Um, and that is actually exactly how I got um, two of my highest uh, sign up bonuses. It was for the Amex Gold. It was this one right here, the 90,000 point one. And then I also got um, an elevated offer for my Amex Platinum through a friend, which was 150,000 points as well. Um, 
as always, right, there's a catch. Um, so always something always comes with a price. So I would say every welcome offer, right, from a travel card um, is a bonus to reward a certain amount of money spent in a specific amount of time. Um, now, as always, I say disclaimer, right, credit cards are not something to kind of be um, toyed with, right? It's a financial product um, and responsible spending is always, always the priority. So you should never ever, ever incur unnecessary purchases to hit a spending requirement, I would say credit cards, again, should work for you, not the other way around. So even though a lot of these minimum spend requirements typically require like $1,000 to $1,300 in monthly expenses, I would never, ever go out of your way to kind of make unnecessary purchases or spend money that you wouldn't normally spend in order to hit that, because otherwise the points just aren't worth it. And again, if you're not in a place, right, where you spend $1,000 to $1,300 a month, um, which I was certainly wasn't at some point in my life, um, there's definitely other travel card options or other card options that um, you can start with. And that can also help um, build your strategy up to maybe a card like this one day. Um, and then one final thing, there's not a lot of rules about, you know, how many credit cards you should have. I know some people who are really into the space and have been in it for years that have over 20 credit cards. Um, but I would say the one rule that kind of most of us stick by with is the 524 rule. Um, it's not like explicitly set in stone. You'll never find it like written anywhere. Um, but from many, many people who have applied for many, many credit cards, um, the consensus is, is Chase. Specifically, if you've opened more than five cards in the previous 24 months, so five cards in two years, Chase, if you apply for another card, will most likely reject your current application. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to business credit cards. Um, so business credit cards don't count towards this 524 rule. Um, so they could be a great strategy to maximize those welcome offers in a short period of time if you are looking to save up as many points as you can in a certain amount of time. Um, and business credit cards are not limited to like business establishments, right? So if you have any form of side hustle, maybe you sell, you have a shop on Etsy, maybe you tutor, um, maybe you sell your clothes on Poshmark, maybe you sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Um, those are all forms of small businesses, right? Um, so you would then be eligible for a business credit card. All right. So now that you've earned your sign-up bonus or you have a bunch of points um, sitting on your car and you just don't know how to use them or you don't want to redeem them to the travel portal, um, what's the next step? So Every single major credit card, as you can see on this list, has a list of airline and hotel transfer partners. So Chase, Amex, Capital One, Built City all have anywhere from 14 to 20 um, airlines and hotels that they partner with that you can then, you know, transfer your points directly to. Um, and depending on which card you have, right, you'll have a different list. But as you can see, a lot of them share um, transfer partners. So for example, Air Canada Aeroplan um, is a partner out of four of the five cards. Um, Air France and KLM is a transfer partner of every single credit card. And some are unique uh, to certain credit cards. So for example, Chase, which is really good for domestic um, airlines. Chase has JetBlue, it has Southwest, it has United. Or Built, for example, has Alaskan Airlines and American Airlines, which no one else has. Um, Capital One has Tap Air Portugal and Finnair. Amex is really good for Delta. If you like using your Delta points, Amex is a great card for that. Um, so depending on which card you have in your wallet, you'll have a different um, list of transport partners available to you. Um, but I would say in general, this is the best place to kind of put your points if you want to use them to travel either to fly or to stay for hotels. Um, and so how and why are these transfer partners important? So I'll provide an example um, because I feel like the best way to learn is, is by doing or by seeing someone else do it. Um, so let's say I wanted to fly Qatar Q Suites, which is the best business class in the world. Um, let's say I wanted to fly, you know, sometime next year. Um, there's an example flight here from Seattle to Doha. Um, and that flight would normally cost you one way all, all over $5,000, which no one wants to spend, um, including myself. And if you redeem um, your points in the travel portal, so if you just wanted to you know, go into the Chase travel portal, the Capital One travel portal and say, I wanna buy this flight and I wanna use my points instead of cash, you would need over 450,000 points, which A, most people, including myself, don't have um, and wouldn't wanna spend on a one flight anyways. Um, and the redemption value that you're gonna get for your points through a travel portal is only about one to 1.25 cents per point. So like equal value, standard, 10,000 points is $100 sort of thing, um, which isn't bad, um, but we can do better. Um, so if you were to transfer your points, right? So Qatar, Q Suites is um, flown by Qatar Airways. So we'll go to the Qatar Airways um, website directly and you would check that same flight um, and you would book it with the points. And it says for points here, right? Business class, you would need 70,000 points and only $99 in tax and fees. Now, if you do the math, that redemption value equals up to about eight cents per point. So essentially you're points are worth eight times more by transferring the points to Qatar than they would be in the travel portal. 
Um, and Qatar is a transfer partner of Amex and City. So if you have any of those credit cards, you would be able to do it. Um, but if you don't have an Amex or City credit card, you could also book that same flight with British Airways, which is a transfer partner of Amex, Chase, Capital One, and Built. Um, so because British Airways and Qatar Airways are both in the same alliance, so they're airline partners, you could say, um, you can book Qatar Airways flights through British Airways. Um, so as you can see, I looked at that same flight and it's available for similar costs, 70,000 points um, and about $100 in tax and fees. So the redemption value is it still the same about eight cents per point here. Um, now to kind of put it in perspective, that same flight, right? Um, if you were just to transfer your points out to an airline partner and book it there, um, you could book almost eight flights um, for that one that you would have booked through the travel portal. Um, so that's how much um, kind of more value that you can get out of your points if you were just to transfer them um, to transfer partners. And I'll provide a couple of other examples that are more applicable, I could say to like more, um, common flights. So for example, if you were just looking to fly a one-way economy to Europe, um, this is a flight on KLM from New York to Amsterdam. Um, and one-way right economy to Europe, um, if you're flying normally, you're not seeing any great deals. It's usually about five to $600, as you can see here. Um, and if you were to re redeem that through the travel portal, you would only need about 67,000 points, which is just, isn't too bad. However, <laughs> um, if you were to go to the KLM website directly and say book with miles and look up that same exact flight, right, you would only need 15,000 points. So compare that to the 67,000 points, 15,000 points, it's much, much less. So the redemption value here is about four cents per point that you're getting here. Um, and Flying Blue is a transfer partner of every major credit card. So whether you have an Amex, a Chase, a Capital One, a Built, or a City, right, you would be able to book this flight for yourself. Um, another example is if you're flying business class to Asia, right, flights to Asia from the U.S. are pretty long, anywhere from 10 to 14 hours. And speaking for myself, I would like to be horizontal if I can for those flights. Um, so I always like to see if there's any good deals for business class flights, um, because those are especially um very, very expensive. Obviously, like this fight, for example, from Seattle to Korea, uh, which is almost $3,000, um, which you would need almost 300,000 points for if you were to redeem it in the travel portal. Um, if you were to transfer those points to Air Canada Aeroplan, right, as you can see here, that same flight is now 75,000 points and $56. Um, so the redemption value here is also about four cents per point. Um, and Air Canada Aeroplan is one of those uh, partners where you can tra transfer it to from any major credit card except City, so you can book it with Amex, Chase, Capital One, and Built. Um, so the trans, the power of transfer partners is almost unlimited. Um, it's where if if you've seen any crazy, you know, bookings on um, social media where someone flew, you know, a live flat business class for only five dollars and sixty cents, this is how they did it. They transferred their points to an airline or hotel partner. Um, and then the second most qu asked question that I get um, either through social media or through friends or through clients is, is how I'm able to find all these flights. Like it's all good and well to see people flying these, but where do you find these results? Like where do you find um, the flights available to book with points? Um, so I'm going to share with you three tools that I use on a daily basis, either for myself, for friends or for clients um, to find these award flights and find these availabilities. And um, all three have free options and pro options um, that offer sort of different um, types of results. Um, but I'll start with Seatsaw Arrow, um, which is by by far my favorite, my favorite award tool um, for finding award availability. Um, so it's the free version is great. I just get the pro version um, just because ever now I do this little time job. It gives me a little bit more flexibility, but I use the free version for about oh, a year and a half before I even upgraded to the pro. So Seats Out Arrow um, is best for travelers that are pretty flexible with their travel dates or their routes and are just looking to explore the sort of the cheapest and easiest way to get to a destination. Um, so the free version I will show shows up to 60 days of availability. So you can search two months in advance. Um, and the paid version, which is $9.99 a month, um, you can see a full year of availability. So if you'd like to plan ahead, that would be for you. Um, and you can also set flights, flight alerts. So you can say, you know, text me or email me the next time there's availability for a business class flight from New York to um, Tokyo. Hey there, everyone. Um, it seems that Perhaps Stacy has had some technical difficulties. Um, we'll just give her uh, a moment to rejoin.
for those of you who are asking in the chat, there will be a recording of this event that is sent out after, depending on where you signed up for it. If you signed up for it on Eventbrite, you'll receive it in an email. If you signed up for it on the Outsite Member Hub, you will receive it um, or you will be able to access it through the, through the Member Hub. While we're waiting to see if Stacy's able to rejoin the session, does anyone have any uh, questions that I can answer in the meantime uh, regarding outsites or the presentation and uh, follow-up materials? Hey, Stacy, welcome back. Second. Great. Um, all right. Are we still sharing? Uh, nope. I can't see your screen anymore. Oh, my mistake. Let's see. I think you'll want to go back maybe a slide or two. There we go. Yes, perfect. Thanks so much. No worries. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, Arrow is one of my favorite tools um, for searching for award flights. Um, and there's a free version and a paid version, um, but I like to use a free version. Um, one of the like features that I like to use is the explore feature. Um, so you can explore certain airline programs. So whether it's American Airlines, Air Canada Aeroplan, whether it's Air France um, KLM, you can explore all the available award flights that you can book through that specific program. So if you, for example, know that you have a chase card um, and you know the transfer partners available through that chase card, this is a great way to see what sort of flights would be available to book with the points that you have. Um, another feature that I really like is the search function feature. Um, so this is more helpful if you have certain dates that you want to travel within um, and certain locations that you want to travel with as well. So I like to use this, for example, if I want to fly to Europe um, on a certain date, um, but it doesn't really matter where I fly to Europe, for example. So the way I like to, except specifically for Europe, I like to find the cheapest points flight there. And then once I'm there, I'll just fly within the continent pretty chilly on Ryanair or um, EasyJet, um, just because um, that's what's most comfortable for me and, and sort of the way I like to travel. Um, so what I'll do is I'll put in my home airport or maybe sometimes even some neighboring airports. Um, and then I'll put in all the possible airports in Europe that I could find flights for um, on a specific date or even a specific date range. Um, um, and then it'll show me all the flights um, available. And then through those, I'll just pick the cheapest one and then book my trips from there. Um, another thing that I really love about Seats.Aero is it has a specific tools tab um, with different tools like the ANA First Class Finder, Delta One Finder, um, Qatar Q Suites Finder, which is basically really great ways and probably the easiest way um, for free uh, to find availability for those bucket list award flights like Qatar Q Suites, ANA is the suite, or maybe Delta One, so Delta First Class, Lufthansa First Class. Um, and through these tools, they'll show you um, from whatever region to whatever region the um, award availability that you can book for just that specific type of seat or type of business class. Um, so if you have, for example, I have a bucket list of all the flights that I would like to experience um, in the next couple of years. So sometimes I'll check these from time to time to see if there's anything available. And in this case, this would be a great time to, you know, as they say, chase the points and not the destination. Um, the second award tool that I like to use, and if you ever heard about points and miles or heard about award tools, you've probably heard of point.me. Um, I would say it's probably the most popular one out there and probably the one that's most recognizable. Um, but until recently, um, you could only get it for co a cost. So there was no free version. Um, and for paid, it's $5 for one day of access, $12 a month or $260 a year. Um, but most recently, which is super, super exciting, um, they created a partnership with American Express. So now you have an American Express credit card, whether it's the Amex Gold or the Amex Platinum, um, you can actually access point.me 
um, for free, which is really, really cool. Um, so you would just type in, instead of typing in point.me um, in your search engine, you would type in amex.point.me and then it would log you in through your Amex account. And then you would be able to access point.me specifically for Amex transfer partners only. Um, so not the full version of point.me, but um, it's super helpful if you're looking to use your Amex points to fly anyways. Um, another partnership that point.me has is with Built. Um, so you don't even need a Built card to do this. You just need a Built account, which you can um, create without needing the credit card. Um, and if you're a Built member, um, you can search for Built transfer partners, um, same thing through point.me, which is really, really exciting. Um, so you can see here, um, it's very similar in um, kind of what it shows like Google Flights. So you would use it very similar to Google Flights and it would just show you instead of cash costs, it would show you points costs. Um, so here, for example, if I want to fly from New York to Vienna in November, it would show me all the flights uh, that I can book with that. And what I really like about Point.me specifically is if you click on a flight, it will show you all the possible options um, and ways that you could book that, right? So for example, say this flight from New York to Vienna, um, it's a British Airways and American Airlines flight, but you can book it five different ways. And depending on which airline you book it with, um, it can cost you a different amount of points and a different amount of cash. Um, so as I always say, transfer partners um, are not made equal. Um, so some are have offer better value and better redemption options than others. So for example, in this list of five here, right, you would go with Qatar Airways um, just because it's less points and much less um, cost and tax and fees than the other four. Um, and this is another free feature that Point.me has, which is unrelated to any of their credit card partnerships. Um, it's very similar to the Explore feature of Search uh, Arrow. Um, so for example, if you wanted to fly um, anywhere um, in a continent or a region in a specific date range. Um, so again, this is more for flexible travelers. And you're, if you're looking to just chase the points um, and not the destination, um, this would be a great place to start. So like if you just want to look for, you know, I have points and I want to find um, the best possible deal to fly to maybe Europe or to Asia in, you know, November because I have time off in November. This would be a great place to kind of start that search and see what options are available to you um, and the points that you have in your wallet. And finally, my other, my last favorite free tool is Roam Travel. Um, Roam Traveler is very similar to Point.me, um, except the full version is free. Um, so Roam Travel gives you unlimited real-time searches um, up to year, a year in advance, actually, across 12 airline loyalty programs, which includes over 120 airlines, all cabin classes, so economy all the way up to first, and then by city or by airport. Um, there is a pro version where you can search multiple airports simultaneously, um, but I find that the search function from CSAT Aero does something very similar for me, so I have yet to pay uh, for the pro version, pro version of Roam.Travel. Um, but as you can see, it has a very similar design, design to Point.me. Um, they're pretty uh, similar award search tools. So it will give you all the possible options to book, um, all the possible loyalty programs that you can book, all the credit cards that you could book with. Um, and you can even filter um, by credit cards, by loyalty programs, by um, maximum number of tax and fees, maximum number of points. So say, right, if you only have um, the Chase Sapphire Preferred, you would unclick all the rest of these cards, just click Chase Ultimate Rewards, and then it would show you all the points that, um, all the flights that you would be able to book with the credit card that you have. And finally, um, we are going to talk about the power of airline alliances and partners. So as I said, not all transfer partners are made equal. Um, and this kind of topic will kind of prove that a little bit. Um, so in the airline industry, um, there's kind of three major alliances or three major groups or bundles of airlines um, that exist. There's Star Alliance, One World Alliance, and Sky Team Alliance. And we'll talk about each one separately. So the Star Alliance um, is the probably the biggest alliance that exists and also, I think, the oldest. Um, it includes a bunch of different uh, airlines that travel to basically all over the globe. Um, but I would say there's some specific airlines specifically within this alliance that um, are best if you're looking to redeem your points um, for flights. So I would say the three best transfer partners um, within this alliance are Air Canada Aeroplan, Avianca Life Miles, and United. And the reason, especially the first two are the best, um, is because some airlines will charge um, fuel surcharges um, on your award flight. So for example, if you notice sometimes, especially if you're flying through London, um, the cash like tax and fees of your um, award flight will be much higher than if you are to fly through another airport. And that's because sometimes they charge like fuel surcharges um, or airport surcharges and Air Canada Airplane and Avianca Life Miles don't do that. Um, so the cash cost associated with um, a points flight will usually be less if you search through those two transfer partners. 
Um, the other thing that, and the reason that they're great is that they do fixed award redemptions instead of um, fluid ones. Um, so no matter the cash cost of the flight that you're looking for, the number of points that you need to book will always, always, always stay the same, which is really, really great, especially for those business class flights that can get up to like $10,000 in um, value sometimes. Um, so these are two examples of redemptions that um, are really great to do through these. So for example, if you wanted to fly that same Turkish Airlines business class, um, you would book it through Air Canada Aeroplan just because they are on the same um, alliance. Um, and the redemption value here is almost six cents per point because that flight is $4,000, but you would only need about 70,000 points um, to book it. Similar thing for Avianca Life Miles. Say you wanted to fly from Japan or from Asia um, back to the US in economy. That would only cost you about $1,000 here, as you can see on Google Flights. Um, but that same flight would only be about 40 excuse me, 7,000 points um, through Avianca Life Miles, um, which would give you a redemption value of over four, about four cents per point. Uh, the second alliance and probably my favorite one is uh, One World Alliance. Um, I will say this is a really, really great alliance, but it is one, some of the, sometimes the hardest one to redeem points with. Um, just because not a lot of airlines in this alliance um, are transfer partners of credit cards. So, for example, the best transfer partners, I would say, in this alliance are American Airlines, Alaskan Air, and British Airways. Um, but American Airline, the American Airlines and Alaskan Air um, are typically pretty difficult to earn or redeem points with just because they are only transfer partners of built. Um, and American Airlines is actually leaving as a transfer partner of built on June 24th, so pretty soon. Um, so you'll only be left with Alaskan Air. Um, British Airways, on the other hand, which is also great, um, is a, a transfer partner about four out of the five credit cards, um, but you're typically probably would pay just a little bit more in tax and fees through British Airways than you would through American Air or Alaskan Air. Um, so here you can see two examples. Um, British Airways is actually a great way to book American airline flights with points. Um, it, since if you don't have American Airlines points, so here you can see you can fly business class to Hawaii um, on American Airlines, so lie flat seat, um, but you can book it through British Airways. And so that flight would normally be Seems uh, Stacey is having some technical difficulties again. Uh, we'll give her just a moment to uh, jump back on. And as a reminder, um, the Q&A box is open. It's where we'll grab the questions from at the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So if you have anything uh, on your mind that you're wanting to get answered by Stacy, you can go ahead and put it into the Q&A box and others can also upvote those questions there. Uh, so um, if you've thought of anything uh, as we've gone along, now's a great time to, to pop it in the Q&A box and we'll, we'll get to the questions at the end. Sorry, I've returned. Good. Um, can we see my screen or no? Nope, I think you need to reshare. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. And we are back. Okay, great. Um, so where I left off, sorry about that. Um, the One World Alliance um, is really great for booking um, American Airlines flights um, through British Airways, um, since a lot of times American Airlines points are either hard to earn or hard to transfer to. Um, so British Airways is a great choice for that. Um, as you can see here, you can still get really great redemption values for that as well. Um, another example is if you're flying to Asia, um, Japan Airlines is a wonderful airline. I've flown it myself, um, but it notoriously does not have any transfer partners um, and it's really hard to earn points with. Um, so the best way to book Japan Airlines flights is actually through Alaskan Air. Um, as you can see here, for example, this economy flight to Tokyo would be about $700, um, but through Alaskan Air, it's only about 37,000 miles and $19. So you're still getting a redemption value of, of two cents per point, um, which is double what you would get through the travel portal, um, which is really great. And then finally, the Sky Team Alliance, um, which is probably, if you're flying to Europe, you're probably flying A, an airline through the Sky Team Alliance, or you're booking through the Sky Team Alliance. Um, so Air France, Flying Blue is one of my favorite transfer partners here, and Virgin Atlantic as well, and even Delta. 
Um, so Delta notoriously, while a lot of us have probably have Delta points because it's a US airline, um, Delta does not have fixed award um, charts for their points. So depending on the cash cost of a flight, the points you'll need will also go up and down, which is not great. However, um, that's where the airline alliance comes in and you can actually book Delta flights through Virgin Atlantic and Air France um, Flying Blue. So here you can see you can book, this is a short haul, you know, Delta economy flight, um, domestic book through Virgin Atlantic, um, which is now three hundred dollars. Um, but you can book it through Virgin Atlantic for only about seven thousand points and five dollars in tax and fees, which gives you a redemption value of four cents per point, which is pretty pretty great. Um, another example, and this is a little bit more niche, but still pretty useful, um, is that there's a lot of airlines um, within Africa that are typically more expensive. So economy flights within Africa are pretty expensive. This one is from Nairobi to South Africa. Um, it's about six hundred dollars, but since this airline is an airline alliance partner of Air France and KLM, you can actually book this flight through Flying Blue um, and you would only need about 19,000 points. And I think it's about um, $100 uh, in taxes and fees. So your redemption value here would be close to three cents per point, which is pretty, pretty great. Um, so as you can see, there is a lot to be said about the power of airline alliances and airline partners, and, and it takes some time to kind of learn, and, and um, there's some that are not about like as commonly known as others, um, but once you kind of unlock that power and figure out, you know, the best ways and the best places to kind of put your points to, whether it's um, flying to Europe, flying to Asia, flying economy, flying business class, um, the amount of money that you, and the amount of value that you'll be able to get from your points will increase exponentially. Um, I would say that is probably the, the biggest key to kind of getting all those really, really crazy redemptions um, that you see on social media or or just in general, being able to, you know, if your goal is to fly um, economy your whole life, but to never pay for a flight again, like this is a great, um, great tool to use for that as well. Um, and then finally, this is sort of my last slide. Um, but if you're looking for more resources, um, I have an Instagram, I have a TikTok, um, points to point travel on all things. Um, you can see destination guides. You, I do points and miles news updates, general travel tips, and more. Um, I also have a website. So it's a landing page and a blog um, where I offer three different services. I will offer a free personalized credit card recommendation. Um, so if you're looking you know, to start using points and miles, you want to get your first travel credit card or maybe your next one, um, and you don't really know which one is best for you and your spending habits and your lifestyle, um, you can fill out a form on my site and I will send you your own personalized credit card strategy. Um, you can also book a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with me. So if you have specific questions that are more, you know, particular to your lifestyle and your trips and your future, um, this is a great way to kind of get some more concrete answers and some more tips that are really applicable um, to your lifestyle and your travel habits. Um, and then finally, uh, if, you know, these tips were super helpful, but you still, you don't really want to spend the time kind of looking for flights or finding that really great award redemption, but you still want to use your points um, to fly. So for example, you know, you have a honeymoon coming up um, and you and your wife, or your husband, you know, want to travel first class to Asia or Europe. Um, and you want to, you know, find award flights for that. You can fill out an award flight um, search submission on my website um, and I will help you find your um, award flights for that, those trips. And then finally, um, I have a monthly newsletter, um, which if you want to join the points to point community, um, I send out monthly updates on um, in credit card welcome offers, monthly transfer bonuses, general tips and tools, and then any sort of news and promotions that are happening um, to kind of help you travel for more for less, travel smarter and travel better. Um, the QR code on the screen uh, will help, um, will send you directly to that sign up page. Um, so thank you so much for, you know, coming. I hope this uh, seminar was helpful. I hope you learned something. Um, I hope you'll be able to use your points of travel more and travel um, better. Um, but if you have any questions about anything that I spoke about or just in general, um, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and thank you, Lindsay, for having me. Thanks so much. That was so, um, that was so helpful. I'm now realizing how much of a disservice I've been doing to myself by booking uh, through my portal and not transferring out. Um, but it, it seems it um, always felt a little bit overwhelming and complicated. So yeah. thank you so much for, for breaking it down and especially sharing um, some of those resources uh, to look into. Um, we had a couple questions in the chat and uh, we do have um, about 20 minutes for questions. So if anyone has uh, questions, uh, go ahead and, and put them in the, in the Q&A and others can, can upvote. I did see a couple in the chat. So we will start with those. Um, the first one, yes, there is gonna be, a, this is recording, the session has been recorded uh, and it will be sent out uh, if you signed up through Eventbrite uh, on email or it will also be available in the outside member hub as well. Um, Heather asked uh, if 
it's possible? Or can you explain more how to transfer hotel points towards airlines if it is possible? Yes. So it's definitely possible. Um, I think there was a, a slide a couple slides back where I saw it. Yeah. Um, so you can see here, it's a little small, but um, you can transfer actually sometimes Marriott Bonvoy points. So if you have a Marriott Bonvoy credit card or you've stayed a lot in Marriott's, maybe you work in consulting or you travel for um, you know, jo your job and you've stayed in a lot of hotels, you might have a bunch of those points. You could transfer those to some airlines. So for example, here you can transfer specifically Marriott Bonvoy points to American Airlines, which is really great. Um, the, however, the ratio is usually a little bit less. So the ratio from credit card to airline or credit card to hotel is usually one to one, right? So if you transfer 10,000 points, 10,000 chase points, you'll get 10,000 airline points. Um, transferring from hotels, however, will usually decrease. So for example, to get that same thousand, same 10,000 airline points, you would probably have to transfer 30,000 Marriott bond by points. So the ratio is usually a little bit less desirable. Um, but if you have a ton of those points sitting around and you're not gonna use them for hotels, um, the transferring them to airlines is also a great way um, to use them. Excellent, thank you so much. And can you also talk a little bit about how you go about discovering travel apps like the ones uh, and resources like the ones that you, you mentioned? Are there any uh, maybe blogs that you also read or are you part of any maybe Facebook groups? Yeah, um, that's an excellent question. I think the best way, and this is with anything in life, but specifically with points and miles, right? You learn either by doing or you learn by seeing someone else do it. So definitely when I first started, I made a lot of mistakes, right? So that first redemption where I saved like over a thousand dollars on my trip to Europe, um, I did save over a thousand dollars, but I spent it all on the travel portal. Um, which isn't bad, but you know, um, I could have gotten more. So again, you learn, you learn by example, you learn through mistakes and you learn by doing. And so um, learning about all these different award tools um, is definitely through other people on the internet, other creators. And I think we've all heard of like the points guy, for example, um, he's been around, that company has been around the longest. So if you ever, you know, heard of points, you've probably heard of the points guy. Um, so that's also a great place to start. Um, I think if you Google any topic, um, there's typically some uh, newsletters or some websites. So like Thrifty Traveler is great. Um, Award Wallet is great. My personal favorite um, is called The Daily Drop. Um, so The Daily Drop is a company that was started by two of my favorite um, YouTubers who also travel using points and miles. Um, there's actually a Facebook group called The Daily Drop Lounge, um, which is full of people like me who use points and miles to travel. Um, and that's also a great place um, to find, to get questions answered and to, or to find, you know, other tips and tricks um, from other people who are doing the same thing. Great, thank you. Um, Pierre asked, what's the best way to get points besides the offers? Um, so I think um, perhaps he's referring to uh, not the sign-on bonuses. So some credit cards, for example, have categories where you earn um, maybe yeah. more points. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so depending on sort of your spending habits or the lifestyle that you have, um, you kind of, I would look at your monthly expenses and see sort of what category is eating up the most. So for me personally, it's my rent because I live in New York City um, and food and groceries. So I spend most of my money on food. Um, so for that reason, right, I use the Amex Gold for most of my purchases. The American Express Gold earns four times points per dollar spent on dining and groceries. Um, so it's probably the most used card in my wallet and the most points that I get per purchase um, on any spending category. That being said, if you don't want to even use a credit card at all and you just want to earn airline points or airline miles, um, to travel, um, shopping portals are actually a great way to do so. So each um, credit card company has a shopping portal, whether it's Chase, um, Capital One, Amex, um, or airlines. So like the American A Advantage shopping portal. Um, and you can usually sign up for those without even having the credit card. Um, and then if you make any purchase online um, and you can activate like the While we're waiting to see um, if, if Stacey uh, comes back, I saw a comment um, in the chat that was just a host and panelist. Robin mentioned paying medical bills with a credit card and then reimbursing them through uh, an HSA, which is a, a really interesting idea. 
Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, All okay, good. Um, so paying medical bills, that is an excellent question. Um, I personally, I will say, have not had experience with that. Um, but if you have like a big purchase, whether it's medical bills um, or whether it's your annual taxes, whether it's um, a house renovation, um, just a large expense that is a one-time purchase um, that is sort of out of your normal budget, that is also a great time to sort of sign up for a new credit card or put that on a credit card, right? So like, I know a lot of creators or a lot of other people who use points and miles to travel um, who are self-employed or maybe they just have like, a lot of properties um and they'll pay their yearly taxes with a credit card and that just eat that's already one sign of bonus right there right because taxes are a lot of money um and so i would say if if you do have any big spending um purchases coming up that are a one-off um that's a great time to maybe sign up for a new credit card um whether it's one with an annual fee whether it's one with not um but i would as always right credit cards should work for you not the other way around um so i would say never ever change your spending habits um, to get those points, those extra points, because otherwise um, you won't be getting as much value as you can for your money. Yeah, you don't want to go into debt to get the points because then it wouldn't make any sense. Always, always, always pay off credit cards in full. Yeah. Uh, Desi has a question. Uh, Desi is wondering, is there a good rule of thumb to know whether you should uh, use points or paying cash for a flight if the flight is really cheap in cash? They're wondering if they should use the points if you have them or save them up for something bigger. Do points ever expire through any of these airline partners? That is an excellent question. So I will say um, when I talk about a lot in this um, hour about redemption value, four cents per point, three cents per point. So that number, what it means is I took whatever cash cost of the flight. So it's like, say the flight cost a thousand dollars. Um, if you were just to pay cash for it. And then I subtract the tax and fees of the points flight. And then I divide that by the number of points and that'll give me the redemption value. Um, and so basically what we're looking for is anywhere a redemption value higher than what you would get through the travel quarter. So my sort of rule of thumb is typically if I'm getting a redemption value of 1.5 cents per point or higher, um, I'll use my points. Um, but if I'm definitely getting even like less than a one cent per point on my redemption value, then I'll either book it through the travel portal or I'll just pay cash. Um, I think it's it's up to you, right? If you just want to use points for all the flights that you book, um, just because you never want to pay for a flight again, then that's up to you, right? Points should work for you and your lifestyle and your choices, not... Um, so whatever your rich life is, whatever you want to use your points for, whatever that means for you. Um, but I would say typically... Um, Anywhere from a redemption value of 1.5 cents per point to 2 cents per point and above is a great time um, to use those points instead of cash. Um, and then if the points ever expire, um, through credit cards, so Chase points, American Express points, Capital One points, to my knowledge, don't expire. However, if you're transferring, this is a, a great point that I forgot to mention. If you're transferring those points out to an airline program, whether it's American Airlines, whether it's British Airways, whether it's Air Canada Aeroplan, that transfer is one way, right? So if those chase points become United points, for example, they can't co go back to being chase points. Um, so it's a one-way street. So I would say never, ever, ever, or never, ever, ever. You should, I wouldn't recommend transferring them just speculatively. I would really only transfer them if you have a specific flight that you're planning on booking with those points. Um, and then once they're with the airline, right, if they're, they become aeroplane points or United points, then those usually typically have an expiration date. Um, that's usually somewhere between like a year, a year and a half. So not too short, uh, but then they do have an expiration date. Yeah. So when you're um, booking, you find the flight that you want and then you pick the, the partner that you're going to transfer to transfer the points and then purchase the flight. You're never kind of um, transferring for the future. You're always transferring your points with a specific flight in mind that you're trying to book with them. Is that correct? Yes. Just because then you always run the risk of those points just sitting here and you not, not being able to use them and you could have used them for a different transfer partner for a different flight. Um, yeah. And uh, Robin asks, uh, what are the trends in the diminishing value of points? Excellent question, Robin. Um, so as with all good things in life, um, we are seeing a trend of um, point award flights um, diminishing in value. So for example, another example of this is um, Virgin Atlantic, which was an excellent way to book um, a a business and first class flights, just upped um, how many points you would need to book either of those by like at least like 10 to 15,000 points each. 
Um, so we're seeing a sort of increase in, in points needed to book certain flights, which is not great, um, but such is the world we live in. So I would say as someone who is very guilty of this, like I like to hoard all my points because I don't want to, you know, waste them or use them for a bad redemption. I like to kind of save them. Um, it's more, it's it's better to kind of use them as soon as, or as, as best as you can in a timely manner, just because, you know, the redemptions are being devaluated. So same thing as like, if your money was sitting in a checking account versus a high yield savings account, right? Inflation, right? Your money is losing value by not um, growing by a certain percentage every year. Um, so as there's a phrase that you use in points of miles called churn and burn, which just means earn those points use them and then earn more points. Um, but I would say as someone who's very, very guilty of hoarding my points, so, you know, um, as those who can't teach do, um, you know, I would recommend if you have an avail, if you are able to use them, um, I would just, I wouldn't feel guilty about using them um, as, as quickly as you can. That makes, that makes sense. Uh, I know you mentioned what your first uh, travel card was, but do you have a favorite that you're using right now? Yes. Um, my first one was the Capital One Venture X. Um, but my favorite one, as I mentioned, and the one I use every day is my Amex Gold. Um, I think just because the lifestyle I live, like I spend a lot of money on, or I spend most of my money on food and groceries besides rent. Um, and so the fact that I'm able to get four times points on all of those purchases um, is, is amazing. And, and in terms of how many points I've earned just for my daily spending, that's definitely where it is. Um, and it's definitely the card I reach for most of my wallet. And do you have any cards that have um, like other perks that you really enjoy, like for example, lounge access or something like that? Yeah. Um, so a very controversial card in, in the points and miles space is the Amex Platinum. Um, I know a lot of people who think it's ridiculous to have an annual fee of $695. Um, and sometimes I agree. But I think I think if you use the Amex Platinum, um, for all the credits that it offers and all the benefits that it offers, which is, includes lounge access, um, global entry TSA pre-check, a clear membership, um, uh, Uber, e Uber, Uber Eats credit, um, entertainment and streaming services credits. It has a bunch of credits um, and I have some breakdown um, posts on my social media about it, um, but you're able to get over $1,400 of value out of that card every year. So yes, it comes with a hefty, hefty annual fee that might deter a lot of people and I would not recommend it for most people. Um, but if you're able to use that card um, for the maximum value that it offers, you're getting a lot more out of it. Um, so I would say the Amex Platinum I love, um, especially because I travel a lot. So I, I like to be in lounges a lot, um, which has absolutely changed my uh, opinion of travel. I used to hate travel days and I used to hate going to the airport. And now if I have a 10 hour layover, I'm just going to sit in my little lounge and eat all my free food and enjoy life to the fullest. Um, so yeah, I think lounge access is definitely great. And if you can find a card that works for you um, and the annual fee um, is outweighed by the benefits that you get from the card, then it's a great perk to have. That's awesome. And how often do you um, uh, look for a new card? So you have some cards now that you like and are using are you waiting until another card has a really big sign on bonus or is there some sort of uh, cadence at which you start to look for a new card? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think it depends. So if, you know, if your strategy is to get just as many points as you can, so you're just trying to sign up for like as many cards as you can in a short period of time, I would recommend maybe waiting at least a month, a month and a half between card signups. Um, but typically, uh, I usually wait for um, a sign-up bonus that um, is elevated. So for example, a good example is my Amex Gold and my Amex Platinum. Um, both cards I was thinking of getting for a couple months, um, but I wanted to wait until, because I knew they have elevated offers pretty frequently. Um, so I waited until those came around and then I was able to sign up for them. Um, so I would say if there's no time constraint, I would really... And, and most cards usually get an elevated offer. So like the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Sapphire Reserve just had one. Um, the Capital One Venture X had one at the end of last year, actually, that was like about 90,000 points instead of the usual 75,000. Um, so elevated offers are a great way to kind of figure out what, when you should get the card. Um, I would recommend thinking about it a little. And if, you know, if it's a card that you're already planning on getting, um, I would never just sort of impulse get it just for the sign-on bonus. Um, but right now, I would say my strategy is um, all the cards in my wallet I plan on keeping for several years um, because I use all the benefits every day. Um, and then I'm probably going to get um, a business credit card next is, is probably my next strategy. Also waiting for an elevated sign-up bonus for that one. Do you have any uh, business cards that you have your eye on or you're hoping yeah. for? Yeah, the Chase um, Inc. 
business cards are some of the greatest on the market. Um, and I really like personally for me and my, and my business, the chasing uh, preferred. It has a $95 annual fee, I believe. Um, and I think the, one of the recent elevated offers, um, was 150,000 points or a hundred thousand points. Um, so yeah. And, and, and business cards, just because businesses tend to spend a little bit more than individual consumers, um, the offers on those would typically be a little bit higher, but they also come with a little bit of a higher spending requirement. So two sides, you know, two, two sided sword or sides, the same sword, but, um, business cards are a great strategy. Um, if you can, yeah, sure. That makes sense. All right, we have just a few more minutes. So any last minute questions, please um, drop them in the chat or the Q&A box. I did see one more um, that we'll get to, but I just want, if anyone has any pressing uh, questions, uh, now's, your, now's your chance to get them in. Um, of course, you're always welcome to reach out to Stacey um, on social media or through her website or by signing up for her newsletter if you think of something after this session. And um, the last two questions, if you have time, Stacey, one is impact on your credit score and the second one is built really worth it so the impact on your credit score a great question it, it is something to think about um the way credit scores work in america which i've never gotten is typically the more credit lines you have open actually um the better it'll be um now obviously if you carry a balance on your cards if you don't pay them off in time that will significantly impact your credit card uh, credit score so i would say always always rule of thumb never sign up for a credit card and never spend more than what you have um because that will hurt you more in the long run than those points will ever help you um and then credit scores signing up for sometimes so when you sign up for a credit card or when you apply for one um, a lot of companies will do what they call hard pull on your credit score which can slightly lower your credit score but very temporarily so I wouldn't recommend, that's why I say like, usually sign up for credit cards, maybe once every 90 days or once every three months, um, just to kind of minimize the number of hard pulls that you're doing on your credit score in a limited amount of time. Um, but typically I've only, pers from personal experience, again, I never carry a balance. I've never paid interest on any of my credit cards. I've only seen my credit score go up in the last two years. Um, so as long as you're being responsible with your spending, um, I personally don't see anything wrong with getting more than one credit card, as long as it works for you and your habits um and then is the built really worth it <laughs> also great question um i love my built card i pay new york rent um and i live with a roommate so our rent is pretty expensive um and i pay our rent with my built which means i've earned many many points um through doing that and so i think if you pay rent through either direct deposit through cash um or through a portal um then the bill is a no-brainer it has no annual fee um and you can pay your rent um, and earn those points of travels, which is money that you would already be paying anyways. So those people who say always buy, don't rent because there's nothing, you're not getting anything from renting. You can um, if you travel a lot. So I think the built card is great. Um, it also has a lot of really good rewards on daily spending as well. So you get like three times points on dining, two times points on travel and sort of other things. And they have a lot of really other great bonuses as well. Um, it's a newer card in the market, which I think is why a lot of people are really hesitant about it. I too was hesitant about it until I actually learned more about it and did sign up for it. Um, but I would say if you rent, um, it also has no annual fee. So if you're really nervous about paying for a credit card, the bill is a really great place to start earning points on your daily spending um, and to kind of dip your toe in the water of travel credit cards. Amazing. Thank you so much. So we are at time, um, just about. So I wanted to thank everyone uh, who joined us today. It was so nice to see some familiar uh, faces in the participant list. But for those of you who don't know me, um, one last time, I'm Lindsay. I'm head of community and events for Outsight, which is a global network of co-living and co-working spaces for remote workers and digital nomads. Um, and a big thanks to Stacey for sharing all this wonderful information with us today. I know that I got a lot out of this and I'm really excited um, about uh, trying some of this out. And um, so if you have any questions about Outsight, please feel free to respond to any of the emails that you, you got about, about this session or message me on the hub. And if you'd like to talk with Stacey more or work with Stacey directly, of course, you can see her contact information up here on the screen, her social media, her website, and her newsletter. Um, so thank you so much, Stacey. That was really, really wonderful. Um, and uh, thank you to everyone who joined us. I hope you have a great rest of your day or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I hope that we cross paths somewhere and, and happy travels. Thank you all for having me. Bye. Bye.